Welcome to episode 11. In this episode, I will show you how to build the frames for the boat. There are three frames in this boat. A forward frame here, a mid frame here, and an aft frame right here. All three frames are fabricated and installed in a similar fashion. If you know how to make one, you know how to make all three. Uh, let's jump right into it. The, each frame is composed of a bottom timber and vertical side frames. So I will try to call these bottom timbers. They're 4x4 four four posts and frames. These are two by, made from 2x6s. In the previous episode, we fared the chine logs. These are the chine logs attached externally here. We fared these to receive the bottom planking, which is going to be plywood. The plywood will span from side to side, and it's four feet wide. At each seam between the plywood sheets, imagine a, a sheet of plywood laying across here, there will be a seam right here four feet forward of the transom so underneath that seam we want to install our 4x4 four four bottom timber I do not have a picture of it but what I did was I laid a sheet of plywood across the boat so that its long edge was flush with the aft end of the transom right here and then I took a pencil and scribed a line where the other edge uh, landed across each chine. That would indicate where the center of our aft frame bottom timber should be. Then I slid the plywood four feet forward and marked the lines, uh, the edge where the, uh, the other edge, the forward edge, landed across the chines. And then I slid it forward four feet again and mark the edge and that would be where the forward frame the center of the forward frame should be here are the resultant marks locating the center line for the forward frame so here's a mark here and here's the mark on the other side this is where the edge of our plywood will land on the chines so this is where the center of the forward bottom timber needs to be the goal is to install that 4x4 four four timber right across here, flush the top face of it flush with these chines and centered on those marks. Begin by laying a 4x4 four four of sufficient length across the boat and place its forward face even with those marks. Slide your combination square, or any square really, along the top face of the 4x4 four four until its 90 degree edge just touches the inside edge of the chine. And make a mark along this side of the rule. There's the mark there. Without moving the 4x4, four four, make a similar mark on the other end over, over here. Next, use the square to transfer this line across the top face of the 4x4. Like this. This is a rotated view. Uh, you then want to mark the center line of this line that's across the, the top face. Uh, if you have a net dimension of three and a half inches, then you'd go an inch and three quarters in from either edge and that should be your center. Mark the center line you just made across the top face and this point here right where my laser pointer is that will be the end of the bottom timber at its top face uh, at the chines. Because the sides have curvature uh, the end of each timber will have to have a corresponding bevel. Here I am using the bevel gauge to get the angle between the timber and the chine. 
Remember the sides are sloping in as they close in on the stem at the, at the pointy part of our boat, the bow, and so there's an angle here between the sides, the curvature of the sides, and our timber that goes across the boat. So I'm just using this bevel gauge, pushing this end of it against the, uh, the timber, and then rotating this until it contacts the side of the boat, it gives me that angle. We want to we want to transfer the angle to the top face. Uh, make sure that angle intersects the center line mark we made, that point right there. The center line of our mark must go through that center line. Now we know where to cut the timber across this entire top face. It's this line right here. Because the sides also flare out as you go up uh, vertically, uh, there's one more angle we need to complete the layout. Here I am using the bevel gauge to get the angle between the timber, the bottom timber, and the side of the boat and I've already taken the liberty this shot this picture was taken after I've made the mark and that's it right here so on this forward face of the bottom timber you want to make a mark remember this was our bevel across the top face you want to make this angle start from that point and go down and on the aft face you want to start at this point and go down So here are the layouts shown on both ends, and the layouts are similar on the other frames. So remember what we did here. We want to install this bottom timber flush to the chines and across the boat from here to here. So the, the top of our timber from center to center needs to be this dimension. So the dimension from here to here needs to match here to here. And that's done by using our square to come up and then across and make a center line. And then to get the angle of the sides, you see the sides are coming in, that's this line here. This line is parallel to this. And likewise, this line we made through that center line mark is parallel to this side and then these lines match the flare the flare is the angle of the sides of the boat and that's what these lines are there's one here and I've marked one in the back right there same thing over here where this line right here is this flare and there'd be a line over here in the back and so it has to fit right in theory So now let me explain how I cut these compound miters. That's what these are. It's multiple angles on the end of a timber. It's called a compound miter. Uh, my father-in-law uh, gifted me with some of his dad's tools. Uh, this is Grandpa Floyd's back saw. It's still sharp and I truly love to use it. Although it's a bit tarnished, a little rust, I cherish this saw because of its sentimental value. Back saws have this stiffener running along the top uh, down their length. It keeps them from flexing. So they're really made for doing precision cuts, which is what we're doing here. I begin with a very shallow cut across the top face along the line. Obviously, I'm not cutting it like this. I'm holding the saw along the lines and then using my right hand, which is my cutting hand, to take the picture. So you close one eye like you're sighting a rifle and you stare at this line across the top and you stare at the line down the forward face that's away from you. So you're leaning over and you're sighting down this line and you're also looking at this line. 
and you start cutting this corner, running the back saw evenly down this line as you're going down this line. Keep up the good work until you cut midway through from corner to corner. Now keep the front of the saw tilted up and buried in your cut. Don't take the handle and rock it down because you want to cut this side of the, of the timber. Keep it angled up the way it is so it's de deeply buried in that cut and that will be used as a guide. So then you slowly bring the back edge of the saw just looking at this line and let it cut right along that line. Don't let the end snap off. Here I supported it with my workbench to finish the cut. There it is. With practice, this becomes second nature. Even though we're in a world dominated with power tools, knowing how to use hand tools is still important. I remember when I was 12 years old and my dad asked me to build a fence for one of his rental properties. My dad insisted I build everything with a handsaw and a hammer, no power tools. I wonder if he was trying to teach me something very valuable at an early age. Maybe he just wanted to give me a workout or make sure I came home to mom with all my fingers. Uh, <laughs> it's probably a bit of all three of those. So there is the forwardmost bottom timber laying across the boat with both ends cut. Amazingly, this will fit down in there. It looks way too long, but remember our sides flare out, so it's narrower at the top and uh, it's got to be wider down at the bottom. Here it is in position. Turned out to be a nice fit. Notice I clamped uh, two by three. Uh, across the top face here uh, and I also clamped it to the boat that 2 by 3 to the boat 2 by 3 to the boat right here and this just keeps the frame in position and keeps the top face flush with these chines so the plywood will lie on there nice and flat the plywood we're installing on the bottom so here's a close-up uh, since we are using epoxy which is gap filling your cuts do not need to be this precise. It's acceptable to have some gaps, some pretty ugly gaps. So don't, don't sweat it if yours don't come out real nice. I attach the frames to the sides with four three inch long deck screws through each end, through the chine, through the plywood, and right into the uh, posts here. Uh, the bottom timbers for the mid frame and aft frame are very similar. Along the transom, I installed a 2x4 between our vertical stern posts. Uh, we will attach the bottom, bottom plywood to this 2x4 instead of screwing into the end grain of this plywood. So now was the time to plane this corner down flush with the surrounding uh, timbers. And I chose the therapeutic option and did it uh, with a freshly sharpened block plane. And voila, nice and flush. Next, I decided to drill the limber holes for the bilge. Uh, limber holes are drain holes. Uh, I want to make sure any water that collects between our frames uh, can make its way back to the stern where we'll have a bilge pump. So drain or limber holes are needed to be cut through each frame. I did mine one foot in from the ends, one foot over, 12 inches. And I used a two and a half inch hole saw and a jig. Now I didn't cut a two and a half inch hole through the middle of the four by four post. I used this jig so I could control the depth. Let me show you what I mean. Here's the other side. The jig is just a 2x4 that I've already cut a hole through using this hole saw. And it's my guide. I can, I can mark a line here on the 2x4, controlling the depth that I want to be, and run the hole saw. And then this 2x4 will just guide it right as a jig. 
typically you have to bury that drill bit in the timber before this hole saw will cut straight without wandering but having it already in a hole in this jig keeps it from wandering and it just drills right in now I can't get all the way across the 4x4 uh, from one side because this cup of the of the hole saw will bottom out that's about as deep as I could go so I take this jig off mount it on the other face and come in from the other direction it made really nice holes I also used some 3M spray adhesive to stick a piece of 80 grit sandpaper onto this 2 inch diameter PVC pipe. I just used this to sand the rough edges uh, of each limber hole after I was done cutting. So here they are. I just cut one limber hole at the center of the forward frame and then you, you got um, one foot in from each side for the other limber holes. Now notice this picture already shows the vertical frames, the side frames, installed. So let me show you how I installed them at the forward position here and the other frames are very similar. I began with select structural graded 2x6 lumber I cut a three foot length. Here it is clamped into position with the ends just sticking out wild. Here's a close up. The edge of each vertical frame will have a bevel. Because the sides are sloped here, the curvature of our sides, our vertical frame has to match that angle. And it's just a constant angle that's ripped down the full length of the frame. Essentially, we just need to cut that corner off to a certain angle. Here is a, another view of me getting that bevel angle between the frame and the side panel of the boat. I then use my chop saw as a calculator to find the complementary angle. In this case it was 24 degrees. I then set my circular saw to 24 degrees and ripped the corner off the 2x6 down its entire 3 foot length. I did not make the cut with this chop, chop saw. I'm just using it as a calculator. Here it is installed after rip cutting the bevel. It turned out to be a nice fit. With the vertical frame clamped flat to the forward face of the bottom frame, right here, this vertical frame is clamped to this bottom timber. That's going to determine how this frame rests against the side. And I just clamped it down here so I could drill the screw holes three inches on center. When I installed the frame on the other side, I made sure the distance back from the bow was about the same. Here it is dry screwed into place using two inch deck screws, three inches on center. Next I climbed under the boat and clamped a 2 by 3 across the frames like this. I used a T-square, that's this metal piece sticking down here, it's just a drywall square. I use this to transfer the center line on the bottom frame or the bottom timber down onto this 2x3 cross brace. I then measured over from this center line an equal distance on each side. So from here I made equal distance marks, three of them here, and I made three of them here. I think I made the first one at 15 and a half inches over from the center line and then 16 inches and then 16 and a half inches. And then I just spread the sides of the boat apart a little until the curvature of the top edge of the boat, which is the bottom because we're building it upside down, uh, looked right to my eye. And 16 and a half inches from the center line looked good. Here's a view of that T-square sitting on the bottom timber and then coming down 
to our cross brace. This is just some temporary bracing. You can ignore that. So I spread the side panels out until this inside edge of the side panel just lined up with this outer mark at 16 and a half inches. Then I attached the cross brace with two screws. I did the same thing on this side. I then attached each vertical frame to the bottom timber, to the floor timber with four three inch deck screws. And these corners that are sticking up, I just cut those off right in position with a handsaw. I just laid the handsaw right across the bottom timber, slid it back and forth and cut, cut these off flush. There it is. All the offending corners have been removed. Along the sides I marked the frames so they would extend beyond the sides four inches. So from the, the top edge of the side here down is four inches. The same thing over here, four inches down, drew a line across and then squared it off. So here's another view of those marks. So four inches down from the plywood and then just made a 90 degree mark. I'm going to cut off these frames right along that mark. And I'll cut these cross members off with a handsaw, just here and right here, right along flush with the outer side edge of those frames. I use my circular saw freestyle to cut off each vertical frame and use my handsaw to cut off the cross frames and here's the result. Recall the five and a half inch wide shear clamps, this, this upper rail right here, this timber that runs around the uh, outside top edge of the boat. They stick above the top edge of the plywood by about four inches. I actually chose to extend the frames four inches above the plywood and the shear clamp will stick up four and a quarter inches. So there'll be a quarter inch reveal uh, above the frames. Now because the shear clamp is attached to the plywood here, there'll be a gap between the frame and the shear clamp and we need to fill that with half inch, a half inch thick shim. The same thickness as the, the side panels. So there'll be a shim here, a shim here, a shim at the stem and a shim between the stern posts and the shear clamp. Here is the shim at the stern post. I just fabricated these from the same plywood we used to make the side panels. This little notch here is just following the profile of our transom and then the edge of the stern post. There is the shim for the aft frame and this is the cross member that ties both vertical frames together and it's just cut off with a handsaw. There's the shim for the mid frame. There's the shim for the forward frame. And there's the shim at the bow on the um, stem. So after the 2x4 at the transom here is installed and all three frames, the boat is very stable. All the temporary bracing and the temporary frame can be removed. Uh, at this point the boat's looking pretty clean. Um, but none of the bottom frames or the bottom timbers and these side frames have been epoxied in yet. So now is the time to do that. Now remember, because the boat was bent in a circular arc around a single temporary frame, just one of these frames is sufficient to maintain the curvature of the boat. This is nice because it permits us to completely remove one of these frames and not disturb the curvature of the boat. So we can take out one of these frames, literally 
Take out the screws attaching the plywood side to the vertical frame here. The four screws that attach into the posts and the, on each, each side and the whole frame just drops right out all in one piece. Now I recommend doing only one frame at a time so take this one out leave the other two in epoxy this back in place and then go on to doing this one. To prove it, here's the aft frame removed. Notice the curvature remains. It's bent around this frame and that's sufficient to keep the curvature. I made a few pencil marks of where that frame uh, lines up so I can get it back in place and also I know where to put the epoxy. Now on the bench I epoxied each vertical frame to the bottom timber and then reassembled the frame on the bench and then lathered up, buttered up both sides of it with epoxy and then installed it back in the boat. Here is a shot showing the aft frame right here and the mid frame after epoxy. Here is the forward frame after epoxy and there you have it all bottom Timbers and frames are installed. We are making fantastic progress. So thanks for watching. Until the next episode, may God bless you, my friend.